Tomorrow, Brett Kavanaugh faces the Senate Judiciary Committee in the first day of his Supreme Court confirmation hearing. Today, tonight rather, Lisa Desjardins has a look at the man and his record. The two major changes in my Brett record. Kavanaugh has been here before, before the Senate Judiciary Committee and before many of the same senators 12 years ago. I have dedicated my career to public service. The aim then was his current job, a judgeship on the powerful D.C. Circuit Court of Appeals. Then, as now, Republicans praised Kavanaugh's qualifications. And I don't see how we can find a better person to serve uh, and give public service than you. While committee Democrats, like Senator Chuck Schumer, said he was too political. If there's been a partisan political fight that needed a very bright legal foot soldier in the last decade, Brett Kavanaugh was probably there. It was a pivotal Washington test for Kavanaugh, who has a thoroughly Washington resume. Born and raised in the nation's capital, he returned after Yale Law School to clerk for Supreme Court Justice Anthony Kennedy. The justice Kavanaugh is now tapped to replace. Kavanaugh's next job dropped him into a once-in-a-generation spectacle. He became a deputy on independent counsel Ken Starr's investigation of President and Mrs. Clinton, and he helped draft parts of Starr's report that detailed possible legal grounds for impeaching Mr. Clinton. Since then, Kavanaugh has openly questioned the power of independent prosecutors, including the Supreme Court ruling that upheld their existence as constitutional. Can you think of a case uh, uh, that uh, deserves to be overturned? Yes. Um, would you volunteer one? No. <laughs> Actually, I'm going to say one. Morrison v. Olson. <laughs> This, uh, that's the independent counsel statute uh, case. Uh, yeah. It's uh, been effectively overruled, but I would, I would put the final nail in. <laughs> <laughs> Kavanaugh has also questioned if presidents should be prosecuted at all, writing in a 2009 Law Review article, the indictment and trial of a sitting president would cripple the federal government. Such an outcome would ill serve the public interest. Kavanaugh soon had another brush with history, joining the George W. Bush campaign team in Florida in 2000 for the state's decisive recount. The Bush win led Kavanaugh to the Bush White House, where he eventually became staff secretary, overseeing the flow of documents into the Oval Office. Democrats like Senator Patrick Leahy seized on that role and Bush White House controversies at Kavanaugh's 2006 confirmation hearing. Did you see documents of the president relating to the NSA's warrantless wiretapping program? No. What about documents related to the administration's policies and practice on torture? Did you see any documents on that whatsoever, according to the president? No. His final confirmation vote was among the more partisan of the time. 57 votes for, 36 against, and seven senators did not vote at all. Kavanaugh has had a life outside law and politics, for example, coaching his daughter's basketball team in a Catholic youth league in the Washington area. But Judge Kavanaugh is best known for his writing, hundreds of opinions and dozens of speeches and articles. Those reveal his role models. That's what he once called conservative icon and late Justice Antonin Scalia. And last year, he pointed to a different former justice, a chief justice, in a speech at the conservative American Enterprise Institute. I wanted to speak about William Rehnquist because he was my first judicial hero. In 1973, Rehnquist was one of two justices who dissented in Roe v. Wade, the landmark case legalizing abortion. Kavanaugh addressed that in last year's speech. It's fair to say that Justice Rehnquist was not successful in convincing a majority of the justices in the context of abortion either in Roe itself or in the later cases. But he was successful in stemming the general tide of freewheeling judicial creation of unenumerated rights that were not rooted in the nation's history and tradition. Kavanaugh's own judicial record on the abortion issue is thin, but it includes a notable case in the past year, Azar versus Garza, which weighed if the Trump administration had to allow an undocumented teenage girl in its custody to obtain an abortion. Kavanaugh voted for a compromise ruling, which assumed the girl had a right to an abortion, but which also said the government did not have to help her get it. It gave the government more time to find a solution. That was quickly overturned by others on his appeals court, and the government was ordered to immediately allow the abortion. Kavanaugh sharply criticized that as a radical extension of the Supreme Court's abortion rulings. That opinion and his experience were selling points in the president's eyes.
Judge Kavanaugh has devoted his life to public service. But Kavanaugh's long record is also fodder for senators as he faces the Judiciary Committee for the most important confirmation hearing of his life. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Lisa Desjardins. This week, we will broadcast the confirmation hearing for Brett Kavanaugh. It begins tomorrow at 9.30 a.m. Eastern Time. Check your local PBS station for broadcast details. We'll also be streaming it at pbs.org newshour.